Live from the ABC7 Broadcast Center, this is ABC7 News at 5 on your side. Nobody should have died. Fire. Right now at 5, the excruciating wait for help as smoke filled a yellow line train. Just how long it took for help to arrive and the new promise to find answers for a tragedy that killed one woman and injured dozens of others. We've now learned that passengers were trapped below the streets of D.C. for more than half an hour after their metro train filled up with smoke, and that's before help even arrived. That is just one new detail in a newly released response timeline. Suzanne Kennedy is live tonight at the epicenter of all of this, the L'Enfant Metro Station. And Suzanne, a lot of criticism already flowing tonight. There certainly is, Allison. We just left a late afternoon press conference at which the mayor said that she is still seeking answers to several very important questions, such as exactly when did that train become disabled in the tunnels below me here at L'Enfant Plaza? And when was the first time that smoke was seen? When passengers emerged from that smoky metro train Monday, they told of frightening conditions and the length of time they were stuck without help. We were there for 35 minutes. Today, a newly released timeline indicates it was at least that long that riders suffered while first responders reacted. The first indication of trouble came at 3.18 p.m. when a construction worker reported smoke coming out of a metro tunnel at 9th and Water Streets Southwest. 322, Metro called DC 911 to report smoke at L'Enfant Plaza. It wasn't until nearly six minutes later it was upgraded to a more serious box alarm sending more units. The first fire truck arrived at 331, 13 minutes after initial calls of trouble at the station. But it wasn't until 344 that Metro confirmed that the power had been shut down and there was a train with people trapped. Jonathan Rogers was performing CPR on Carol Glover, who died that day. He says he was on the train an hour before being evacuated. It was way too long for, um, you know, the, the people that were on our car, at least, to get the help they needed. So, um, you know, an hour. You, you can't survive in an hour if, if you're really in trouble. Today, the mayor said an initial report on the incident will be released in the next 48 hours. From our point of view, we have to make sure that the response in our fire department um, it responded in every every fast and uh, safe way possible. Fire service consultant Dave Statter questions the timing of many aspects of the response. It does seem like a long time, and certainly if you're on that train, it's an eternity. But the firefighters do have to make sure they're safe. In the end, Claire, Carol Glover was taken to the hospital at 4.25 p.m. That is more than an hour after eyewitnesses report first seeing smoke. As for that report that's going to be released within 48 hours, it will also include hours of radio traffic information as well as interviews from first responders. As for Metro, we called them to get a comment on this timeline. They say they are unable to do so because they are currently engaged in an investigation with the NTSB. Reporting live in Southwest Washington, Suzanne Kennedy, ABC 7 News. All right, Suzanne, thank you. Those people should not have been trapped like rats. That is the message from an attorney representing two people on that yellow line train during Monday's Metro chaos. Among those passengers, 53-year-old Malbert Rich, who said he composed a final text message for his mother and his children. The lawsuit accuses Metro of being negligent in several areas, including its response and its overall train maintenance. Ahead on ABC 7 News at 6, we compare Metro's track record for injuries to similar-sized public transit systems in Boston and Chicago. Meanwhile, services taking shape now to remember that Alexandria woman who died on board the Yellow Line train, Carol Glover. A memorial service is planned for 10 a.m. Monday at Capitol Hill Baptist Church in Northeast Washington. Glover was a mother of two, a grandmother of three. She was 61 years old. Some frightening moments of deja vu for Metro riders this morning. A smoke alarm sounded at Gallery Place just after 9, including a message to evacuate the station. Metro later said that a faulty smoke detector is what caused that alarm to activate. The alarm has a default message to evacuate as a precaution.